Welcome to the Crimson Circle. This is our monthly meeting and we're happy to be here with you. Whether you're here in our live audience here in Louisville, Colorado, the Crimson Circle Connection Center, or listening online from crimsoncircle.com, watching online crimsoncircle.com, or you're listening on Blog Talk Radio. Regardless, welcome and glad that you can be here with us. We're just about getting ready and I hope that they can just let you see a, a, a moment of this. Jeff Hoppy is getting ready to channel Adamus. <laughs> that was Jeff, that was not Adamus. <laughs> There's quite an energy uh, flow that Jeff connects to that's here for all of us. And it's such an honest, clear place of integrity that he comes from that it, it, I'm very proud to be here knowing that Jeff is getting ready and Adamus is right there. But as part of that, this is an important time for us to get really clear and present. And the best way that we do that for each of us is to take the deep and conscious breath. So I invite each of us, those here in the studio, those listening and watching online, take the good, deep breath. Breathe deeply into you, feeling and allowing. With each breath, the energies flow, filling your body. Allow the distractions to just Breathe them out and let them go. And breathe in the I am here. Take the good deep breath with feeling, opening all your senses, human and divine. Feel with all that you are. We have beautiful sensual music that's here to invite you to open your senses. So as we get ready for Adamus, take the good deep breath and breathe into this music, feeling it, allowing it, sensing it. Take the good deep breath.
I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain. Ah, yes, what you just experienced there, and we experienced it in our last gathering in Munich, was real spirituality, uh, sensuality, feeling, emotion, happiness, everything, authenticity, being very, very real. There's this whole kind of, um, kind of a concept of spirituality, it's sitting around in a temple in Oming. And uh, I'm, uh, there's nothing against that. You've all done that. And it got you to a certain place. And there's still times when I know many of you feel that uh, attraction of the temples or the monasteries once in a while. Oh, just to go back in that quiet. But remember, we shut down the mystery schools. That was our little refuge. That was our island away from the village people. That was our that was our quiet space, but we shut it down hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Asked many of you to leave. Oh, there was a lot of tears. Some of you who still harbor ill feelings towards me for throwing you out, <laughs> locking the door behind you. But it was time we left. It was time to get out into the world. Yes, you still need to take time to yourself. You still need to get out in nature. Uh, certainly listen to music. Sometimes just the stillness of nature, just the beauty of being with yourself, with the I Am, with your oneness. Oh, I, I like doing this. I can look straight into the world through here. Yeah, you need that once in a while. But this is a different kind of age, a different kind of spirituality. I, and please um, get upset with me if you want, but <laughs> We're moving beyond the oming days. What you're doing is truly setting up a whole new spirituality, for lack of better words, but it's a whole new authenticity about the I Am, about the Self. Without all the discipline, who needs it? You really don't need it. Without all the suffering and all the karma and all the routines that you have to go through, there are many who don't like what we're doing. Uh, many who shake their heads, many who have left because oh, uh, it's not very spiritual. They're playing all this wild music. Next thing you know, they're going to be dancing. <laughs> it's the New Age people. And there's many who don't like it because they are so patterned into having the, the meditation, following a guru, mm -hmm. and doing these routines lifetime and lifetime. Not just one lifetime, but many lifetimes. And it gives them a certain degree of um, uh, happiness. But happiness, I, I, I'd like to throw out the word happiness. I'd like all of you to throw it out of your vocabulary. It's, it's a human word. There is no word, there is no um, essence for the word happiness in the other realms. It's a human word. It's based on judgment. Are you happy or sad? But when you really ask somebody to explore what makes you happy, they actually really don't know. They're always searching for happiness and never getting there. It's a human judgment because if you're not happy, you're sad. Well, why not both? Well, or why not just throw out the word altogether? I am that I am. I am human. I'm a master. I don't have to go through this whole thing about am I happy. I'll give you a little clue here. You're never going to achieve happiness in this human lifetime or any other human lifetime. Never achieve happiness. I don't know one ascended master that achieved happiness. Enlightenment, yes. Realization, absolutely. But happiness, it's a human quality. It's like saying you want to be super intelligent. You're never going to be, because there's that other side that's still stupid, and it's going <laughs> to kind of balance that super intelligent. You can never have enough intelligence, Sart. So <laughs> don't, even, don't even try. Let it go. And good, good Lord, what is that supposed to be? Oh, this is you, Adamus. Oh, it oh, looks yeah. just like me. Yeah, I, I thought so. I thought Actually, so. like in some of your dreams, yes, that <laughs> I may appear that way, a little troll. Um, but you have to do what you have to do. 
Where were we? Happiness. Trolls are good guys. Trolls are good guys. See, yeah. there we go. Good and bad. Are they happy? Are Jeff and Linda happy here? Enough. Happy enough. Happy enough. But look, he is this called? He's looking the other way. Well, that looks blissful. And he doesn't have Off any his shoes own world. on. And he's thinking about it. Yeah. You look like you're about to pull a practical joke on him, like pushing him into the water. <laughs> That's what it looks like. She did once. <laughs> Nearly killed him. I had to rescue him from the alligators. <laughs> true story or not, dear Linda? It's a true story. <laughs> happiness. Happiness. Uh, it's, you know, it's a mind game. It's a mind. You have a word for it. I can't say it because it's four letters, starts with an F and ends with a K. But it's a, it's a mind. It's a, I, didn't, I didn't say it. It's a mind twist trying to achieve happiness. You get up in the morning, am I happy today? How about just, I'm here today. I am that I am. And then let the authenticity come in uh, that there's so many different feelings. And you could have, your body could be aching a little bit. You could have, you know, one of those human kind of days where things aren't just clicking. So what? So what? Let yourself experience it. We, we do these things now that you see, uh, bringing music in. And, and I'm, I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but actually I'm not. Oh. You know, it's not the twangy Hindu music and ting, ting, that type of thing <laughs> once in a while. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's alive music and sensual music. That's the new spirituality. That, uh, let's hope this never becomes a religion, but that's the new sense of spirit mm -hmm. on earth. And, and that's where we're going. That's what you're doing. You're. you're truly breaking ground on things. I mean, this is not your mother's New Age. This is not typical New Age. You're breaking ground in some of the things we're doing, and it's challenging at times, yeah. Uh, but you're following your you're knowing this, and you're getting there. So let's take a good deep breath with that. I'm, I'm going to give you a choice today, because life is full of choices, kind of. So we can either do today's shout. It's our last shout in the Transhuman series. We're going to be starting a new series. And, and it's up to you who are sitting here, uh, but you can all vote too if you're looking in online. Would you rather have a serious lecture today? I'll get out the podium over there and put it here, and we'll have a serious lecture, uh, mostly St. Germain, uh, Saint Germain, dear Caldra, Saint Germain. Or, <laughs> Or we can have uh, fun. Uh, I can be a little pro provocative. You? Uh, I can, well, I can be entertaining and charming, and hopefully reflect to you some of the wisdom that you have. So, and I ask for a very good reason, which I'll explain in a moment. So, all who want to have the serious lecture at the podium, uh, raise your hands. A few, a few. Okay, all right. And those who, those who want the uh, fun, provocative, witty, entertaining, all the rest of that, uh, yeah, the yeah. the typical Adamus. Oh, I think we went. And those who really don't even know where they are right now, they're just <laughs> totally lost. Not even sure. The reason why I ask is because the the there is a programming to uh, spiritual and metaphysical lectures. There is a programming. Mm -hmm. People want to see. Something other than just, uh, how do you say, human quality. I've been human. I can do quality with quality. And some people want to see the channeler on the chair, the eyes closed, really actually removed from the audience and really just kind of into themselves, because it looks different. It, it feels different. Uh, mm. That's what they're programmed for. And certainly an entity would never say, starts with an F, ends with a K. They'd never say fuck, uh, because, oh, it's supposed to be spiritual. And an entity would never walk around and, and be a pain in the butt, uh, and all the rest of that. Uh, so their expectations sometimes are shattered. They want to go into the, into the old style, because they're comfortable with it, uh, and they, they just want a relatively dry message delivered, goes to the mind. It goes to the mind. That's, that was my issue. When, mm -hmm. when Tobias left, I came in, I, I, and I really had to consider whether I wanted to work with this group. Pirates. Uh, pirates, yeah, yeah. 
But what I loved about you is I knew you were going to be open to a different style, and I knew I'd have to deliver a different style, because my style is your style. Th this is you asking for it. The style required – it had to be fun. You want to show up. You don't want to wear out your knees with all that kneeling and groveling. You wanted to have some laughter, because life is actually pretty fun. It's kind of a big joke. Even if you're going through the, what you think is the worst thing in your life right now, at the end it's really kind of a big joke. I mean, it really is. <laughs> uh, and I said to myself, how do I design this? How do I design uh, how we get together? What's the energy design of it? And it wasn't a mental thought. And by the way, you're going to be going there yourself. You're going to have energy designs that transcend the thinking. You already are. I know so many of you. You're designing energies rather than thinking about things. So I looked at an energy design that I felt would work. First of all, it would drive off the ones who are not here for their embodied enlightenment. Mm -hmm. That was almost the number one task, because it's so difficult to, to do this anyway. But if there were a lot who were there simply for the fascination, and simply for to sit through a sleepy channel with some sleepy music and some sleepy words and go to sleep, which is not all too bad, but uh, if they were here just for that, and if it was a hobby rather than a commitment, mm. a deep commitment, we were going to have an imbalance. So part of the setup was to find a way to let them go. They, they couldn't – they really couldn't handle the, the energy, the – the humanizing of divinity. Mm. And when I ask Calder to open his eyes and walk around, and when I tell my bad jokes, and when I get rather braggadocious, uh, which is all in, in, in done intentionally and done as a distraction, I want to humanize divinity. Mm. I want to bring it onto this realm so you're not trying to go out there to find it. I want to bring it here. So in order to do so, it's still acting a little human. Uh, it, it's, we're not going to do uh, Jerry Lewis slapstick kind of stuff, but we'll do Adama's kind of stuff, kind of humanizing what Nobody we do here. Nobody knows who Jerry Lewis is. He's really old. Who knows who Jerry Lewis is? All the French know who Jerry Lewis is. I mean, most of the French. Jerry Lewis, a comedian, pie in the face. So anyway, uh, so I guess we're going to do more of the entertaining. Okay, and provocative, let's go. annoying, and okay. okay. So I You're just go on record as saying okay. uh, I'm bi. I could go either way. I could do <laughs> a straightforward lecture, uh, or we could have some fun, and all the time, tremendous distraction. Uh, I would call it genuine distraction, having fun and letting the divine just kind of glide in, glide in so beautifully. Are you learning anything through this? Are you going through anything? I, I think so. Would it be awful if, if this was um, just a, a big cold temple and uh, we were coming in here and we all dressed like monks and incense? I, I don't think that would work too well with this group. I think you'd burn not the place so down uh, right away. Not so good. Not, not so good. So, okay, let's begin this shout. It's Independence Weekend, I understand, Fourth of July weekend in the United States, and also Canadian Day. Um, hey, Fourth of July, and, and I have a particular um, connection and a passion for it. I came over to the United States on several different occasions, uh, physically, uh, taking a boat over. I took a diff different name. Uh, I didn't want to go by uh, Count Saint-Germain. So I took a different name. Uh, I said I was from England. My last name was Abbott. Hmm. And I came over here and was very much involved with what is now called the Declaration of Independence. Oh, of course. Of course. No, this is a very true story. And I had a very strong connection with the Masons, uh, because back then the Masons, the Masons are, are uh, the ones who – the stone workers. And most people really aren't aware of that. that the, you had to be in the guild, and the guild was controlled by the church, and the church only let you in if you were willing to <clears throat> take care of. 
He doesn't carry a lot of money anymore. I'd give you. Ah, jeez. Okay, here we. No, stop that. Stop that. <clears throat> so, the guild. You had to. You had to pay the church to work. And if you weren't in the guild, if you didn't pay properly, you didn't get to work. So the Masons were started. Masons also was uh, uh, had a good understanding of the mysteries. They really understood. They they were. They understood the pyramids. They understood a lot of the sacred geometry. You see, the church wouldn't allow that, but in the Masons it was, it was studied. And I don't want to say it was a secret society, but there were certain things that were kept amongst the Masons. So I worked closely with them, and, and truly the likes. I'm not exaggerating. Linda always wants to, it wonders if I'm exaggerating stories, and a lot of times I do. <laughs> I work closely with George Washington. <laughs> sure. I called him George. <laughs> he called me Dick. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. <laughs> My name was Richard Abbott, and once in a while he would call me Dick. Well, I don't understand the humor in that. Richard, Dick, a nickname. But don't you? Uh, do any of you? You have nicknames, right? So George said, Dick. Uh, <laughs> How do we lay this out? How, how, do, we, how do we frame uh, the, the Declaration of Independence? A and we brought in the likes of uh, Hancock and Jefferson, and uh, dealt with, with all, many, if not all of them, kind of behind the scenes. This place that is now called United States of America was set up as a new world, a new earth. Mm. It was a place for freedom, although it's never really been free. Uh, it's never been free. There was the supposition of freedom, but actually because of the early ones who came over were very involved in the church, there wasn't a terrible lot of freedom. Well, there was a lot of angst about other religions if you weren't uh, part of the English uh, church, and that's why I chose to be English, just so I could maneuver around better. But it was designed for people to come from all over the world to meld, to have certain freedoms. It was designed uh, not as a democracy so much as a republic, but the people had a voice in it, which they really didn't have uh, in most other places in the world, and particularly in Europe. There was quite an effort to unify Europe back in the early through the late 1700s, and to a degree it worked. To a degree people had more freedom than ever before, but it still it still didn't meet the requirements of so many people who were looking for something different. So they came here from all over the world, literally. It's one of the biggest melting pots in the world, other than perhaps Brazil. They came from all over the world seeking religious freedom, freedom to work. But oddly enough, many of them were initially indentured servants. They, they agreed to be slaves for about, usually about ten years in order to, for the passage to come over. But it meant that much to them that they were going to give up ten, sometimes fifteen, twenty years of their life, if they brought their families, so that the ones coming after them would have so many more freedoms in their life. I had great passion for what was being done here because I knew that it had the potential to spread around the world. And to a degree it had, or it has. Uh, by the way, as a backup to America, the backup uh, in case things didn't work out so well here was Atara, Australia. Uh, and, and in a way, Australia also, uh, it, was a, it was a prison colony. Uh, it was the, um, your, your mates, your cellmates that went there. And it was a place where Freedom was demanded, actually, because of those who had been in prison, many of them imprisoned falsely. So with the dynamics of all this taking place, and at the same time, Europe was going through its um, changes, changes in politics, getting away from the monarchies and the, the royals. That, that was a lot of work. That was, that was very challenging. Not so much because the monarchs or the royals were didn't want to give up their, uh, their power. Uh, in a way, they didn't have a choice because, uh, well, the peasants, the people at the time, were so rebellious that they would just kill them. Uh, and we have things like Bastille Day coming up pretty soon, the opening of the prisons and letting people out. 
I'm going to bring this up now because this whole question, are humans really ready for freedom? A question I'd raised many years ago in, in a shout, and uh, people were very upset about it. But I still contend that the, the jury's out and possibly leaning towards no, they're not. Some freedoms, yes, or what I call the pretense of freedom, just because you can decide whether you want to wear black socks or white socks on a day. But even prisoners sometimes have that freedom. The freedom to work. Well, how stupid is that? Freedom to work. Why would you want to work? Why would you want to have to go to a job, even if you can pick your job, other than if you enjoy doing it? But why, why work? That's not freedom. Are humans really ready to have their freedom with themselves, their freedom out of hypnosis, the freedom to be divine, the freedom to go beyond the mind? And I think that's perhaps the biggest freedom that we, you and I, are working on right now, that freedom to go beyond the mind. And it's oh so tough, oh so tough, and partly because you're programmed into it. It's, it's hypnotic. It's not impossible to break out of. It's not impossible to order or to open the doors of the Bastille and just walk out, or the zoo, or whatever we want to call it here. Not impossible at all, but it, it takes a, a crazy bird to do it. <laughs> and it really does. You're held in there by yourself, uh, up until recently, and to a large degree by your ancestors and their thinking patterns. You're held in there by mass consciousness. You're held in there because you don't want to do the wrong thing. You don't want to be seen as crazy. You don't want to stand out in a crowd. And a lot of you, the very, they're very, very deep concern that you're, you're going to go insane. Very deep concern. Some of you have bordered on it or have been there in the past, or depression or uh, some of the other psychological diseases. So you know what it's kind of like to be there. Some of you have gotten pretty close to it in a, in a drug-induced or alcohol-induced state, feeling what it's like to almost lose it, hanging on to every possible last thread of identity that you thought you had, just feeling like you're crashing, like there's nothing there hanging on to that identity and literally feeling what it would be like to go mentally insane. And it's, a, it's an awful feeling, a lost feeling. I can tell you right now, if you're here, if you're listening to this, you're not going to go insane. You may think you're going insane, but you're actually not going to go insane. You're not. Just as is, you're not going to uh, grab a rifle and go out and shoot people in public, just as if you're not going to get into a be another bad relationship, just as you're not going to continue doing uh, harming other people or maybe even yourself. You're far too long now, far too long. The fear is still there, the worry. What's going to happen if I kind of let go, if I free myself? A am I going to do something really stupid? Am I going to harm another person? And as you know, you'd much rather harm yourself than any other person, uh, than even an animal, a pet. You'd much rather take that on yourself because, well, you're strong and you know how to handle it. You know how to recover from it for the most part. So freedom, that question, are humans really ready for freedom? Probably not. Probably not. It would take a long discussion about what freedom is. It's not just the ability to worship where you want to worship, or the ability to have a certain job, or get up at three in the morning and take a shower. Uh, those things aren't really freedom. The freedom is really within yourself. The freedom is freeing yourself from the, uh, the humanistic part of you that you've gotten so familiar with, the mental, the physical, the fears, the, the limitations. They're, they're comfortable in a way. But the fact is, even if you think that you're still thinking about it, even if you're waffling, I guess you call it, or sitting on the fence, it's going to happen. 
that's going to happen. You're, you're in this lifetime for that liberation. You didn't come here to work through uh, some karma. You didn't come here to be just a mother. You didn't come here for anything else other than your freedom. And you came here with very, very clear, clear guidelines for it. This had to be the lifetime. If you haven't noticed lately, things are going very, very fast. Very fast. And so fast that you almost can't keep up, which is good. It was designed that way. Not necessarily going fast for everybody else. Some, a lot of people are getting bored right now. But it's going very fast for you because things are changing. The whole distortion of time, for one, is, is uh, to my point. Many of you are feeling the time distortion. It is going fast, or sometimes it could seem like it's going slow, but everything is going very fast right now. Your biological systems, your mental systems going very, very fast. The changes are imminent. I've talked about that over and over. The changes are imminent. I even said in our shout last month, to the shock of Calder and a few others, but I said, you know, once you stop working on your enlightenment, once you stop the disciplines, once you stop all the searching and the seeking, once you stop getting up in the morning and saying, well, it's another day on my way to enlightenment, once you stop all that noise, once you stop feeling like you have to read two spiritual books a week or you're going to fail uh, on this, once you stop your obsession about finding truth, that's an obsession, because there is no single truth. It's all truth. It's the and. Once you stop all that noise, all that frantic, neurotic activity, and you take a deep breath, you just take a deep breath and you allow. The date is set, and I mean that very literally. If you are chasing around after spirituality, you're following gurus, you're, you're, you're having to do certain disciplines every day, even if you're still just using Crimson Circle as a kind of a, oh, I've got to get my monthly fix, and uh, maybe next year enlightenment, maybe a long time from now, the date is uh, nebulous. The date is in the fog. It's not, it's not really there. I mean, we could look into it if I took you on a journey into your, uh, into your future, but you would see many, 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 many dates. And some of them would also be in the fog. Some of them wouldn't be discernible. But you'd see many dates because the date isn't really determined yet. They're all just potentials. They're all floating out there, big sea of potentials, and it could be any one of them. But once you stop, you take a deep breath. I am here. I am that I am. You take a deep breath and allow you, allow your human side and your divine you don't think about it. You don't wonder, well, did I allow enough? Was I in the right color clothes when I allowed? Was I, did I eat? Oh, God, I ate some meat a week ago. I'm a vegetarian, but I kind of slipped, and it's like, oh, it's not going to happen. Then it doesn't. But if you can be truly authentic with yourself, I am that I am. It's kind of almost a I don't give a damn kind of attitude, but not negative. I just don't care. Because that date is here. You don't have to know what it is, that particular date. Actually, that would push it kind of out of uh, um, perception. But, ah, the date is set within about a week. And then it tightens up as, as you really allow. And then you don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have to worry about, how am I going to manage? How am I going to manage between now and enlightenment? You don't. It comes to you. It just happens. You're given choices, of course, and you can create your own uh, distorted reality to a large degree, but it just comes to you. And that's an odd feeling. It's just coming to me. Now, yeah, you still may be working and exercising and all the rest of this, but you're not fretting about it. It's just there. The date is set, and it doesn't mean you're going to die either. Uh, it just means the date is set. As a matter of fact, it shifts the whole, what you could say, the whole programming about death itself. It shifts that somewhere else. And then comes the question that Kathumi brought up in our last gathering in Munich. God, what am I going to do? 
I'm not working on my enlightenment anymore because it's just going to happen. Uh, geez, I lost most of my friends. I don't have the old passions like I used to. What do I do? That's a human question. It's right up there kind of with happiness. Uh, you know, like, oh, am I happy? What am I going to do? Those go out of vocabulary. They just don't exist anymore. They're just not in the mind play, the mind game. What am I going to do? Isn't it strange that humans have to think they have to do something all the time? Well, but then I'm just going to get up in the morning and I'm going to get fat and I'm not going to be worthless. Shut up, human. Just <laughs> shut up for a minute. Because, as Kathumi pointed out, everything starts talking. You start talking. He, he literally did. He just started walking. Imagine that. He had no idea where he was going to go to, and he didn't care after he got out of the insane asylum. <laughs> Funny thing happened on the way to enlightenment. <laughs> but he claims it was the best two years of his life, drooling all over himself, having to have somebody with bedpans. He says it was good. He says it was the best experience. He could have done it long and slow over many lifetimes, grueling, agonizing, not really enjoying life. And he said, I'm just going to get it over with two years, and that's it. Then, then he was Kathumi, and then he just started walking. He didn't have to know where he was going. He knew everything was going to work out, but he didn't have to know how. That's the problem. You know, you say, well, okay, I'm going to just travel around the world, and then you start planning. And then you just, you just take a deep breath and allow. And it's there. It's, it's a very simple, beautiful thing. But then he started, he, he heard everything talking to him, which he'd never really heard before, maybe a little bit when he was a young child. Suddenly, literally, the trees were talking to him. Hey, human! Hey, human! And Kazumi, well, what, what? The trees are talking. And he, then he'd go up, make sure nobody was watching. Hey, tree, how you doing? And the tree's like, hey, I'm really grounded, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but I'd really like to branch off. I've been st sitting here all, all this time. Angel humor. Um, it doesn't talk in words, it, it, well, sometimes, but it talks in energies. And actually, you'd find uh, that birds and trees and fish and water and air, they're really quite funny. They're not so stuck in the mind. They, they don't have a mind. They're really quite funny when, when you feel into them. They don't tell jokes, you know, they're not as funny as I am, but they don't tell jokes on a stage, but they have such a kind of a wistful way of perceiving things. There's such an innocence with them. Uh, there is really an innocence. Uh, they don't worry about a storm coming up, or lightning striking them. Uh, they, they allow everything. They're not soul beings like you. They don't have mental intelligence. Uh, they, they're not going to have iPads or uh, laptop computers or anything. They're just enjoying beingness, and they have a kind of a really fun sense of humor. That's what Kathumi did. He just went out and started feeling everything without a plan, and just everything started talking. There's, please understand this. There's never a boring day as an embodied, enlightened human. Never. Everything comes to life. You'll cry when you realize how boring everyday human life is. You probably already have kind of an inkling about that. The, the routines and the patterns and the lifelessness, you'll, you'll cry. But back to my point. Whatever Have you started my your talk yet? This is a four no, 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 no. We're, I haven't started yet. Um, I'll get there. I'm having fun. This is my. <laughs> I asked for permission, right? Okay. And actually, I said, "Do you want I said, "Do you want a dry talk, uh, podium talk, or a lecture, or the fun?" I think we're somewhere right in between. <laughs> um, You had to reserve the front row for true admirers and worshipers. <laughs> so, so, um, so, my dear friends, freedom. I, I wanted to bring that up right now because that's where you're headed, and you don't effort to get there. You allow to get there. It's not any work. I, I would say it's like this: the uh, the door of the Bastille is already open, mm -hmm. and it's already open. And it's like now saying to you. You know, let's go out. It's um, I'll get into it in a moment, but um, yeah. 
have a sip of coffee? I did. A lot of sip. There's just so much going on in the room right now and online with all of you. There's so much there's so much you're letting down. I mean, letting letting the guards down. Uh, you're you're uh, letting the the human mental down. You're just allowing, and that's such a good thing. Maybe we should just sit in home for a while, and that's <laughs> just let it down. But I have a question, <laughs> as I always do. I have a question for you. Uh, Linda, on the microphone, please. My yes. Pleasure. And this some consider the annoying part of the show. It's my favorite part because it's you. It's you. It's the interaction. It's the uh, how boring it would be if I just sat up here the whole time, but I get to have fun. Remember Tobias used to do questions and answers? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. No. 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 And, and I do too, but I ask the questions. The question today is, if you were to – I hate to be so, so candid about it – but if you were to die today, today, what, what, what would you feel you hadn't done? What would be your regret? Just the number one thing. What, what would you go, ah, jeez. And I asked this because I had a couple last week, not a couple uh, like a man and woman, but or man and man, man. Uh, but I had two people last week, two individual people come over to the other side, Shambra. And by the way, we have 33 now, 33 who Ooh. have actually allowed their realization. And would you believe it that they're the quiet ones? No, 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 no. I mean, you don't see them. They don't make a lot of noise. They're the quiet ones. Thirty-three. We're we're getting there. Slow as hell, but we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When the applause light comes on, that's when you applause. When the laugh light comes on, that's when you laugh. And <laughs> so the question, and, and I ask because. Not just the two that came over last week that prompted me to ask this, but it happens very, very often when Chumber come over, and right away they they realize they're uh, disembodied. <laughs> uh, they realize, oh, geez, well, I left it back there on the planet. I'm like, hey, would you clean up after yourself? Bring your body over here. But they start lamenting right away, even before they meet their dog or you know, their families if they want to do that. Even before they ooh and awe by me standing there. You know, you'd think that, oh, I'm on the other side, and it's not Jesus, it's Saint Germain. Ow. But I've had them that do that. They're like, oh my gosh, I'm in the violet flame. I'm right, oh, right here with you. Ascended Master, who's one who's trained more than any other Ascended Master, is the one of fame, the one Okay. So uh, the, the problem was that they, right away, it's before they recognize anything. Uh, to me, I'm just a lamppost at that point. And they're like, ah, oh, 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 I regret that I didn't do this. I regret that I didn't do that. And I let them go through their regrets and their regrets, and then they finally realize I'm not a lamppost. I am Adama Saint Germain. And uh, they're totally impressed. And uh, then they want to know how, when they can get back down there. I'm like, no, 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 no. I've locked the tube. You're not going back down. You're going to just stay here for a little bit. We've got some talking to do. But it's always the regrets, and it's very interesting. I'm doing a little study. I'm going to take back to the Ascended Masters Club. I'm doing a study on uh, spiritual psychology. Uh, what, what are the regrets from those who are on a dedicated, genuine spiritual path to embodied realization? What are the issues? Uh, and so that's why I asked the question, Linda, on the microphone, please. What would be your regret if you just keeled over today? And when Linda hands you the microphone, it doesn't mean you're going to. <laughs> Hello, Ricky. <laughs> it, this is a hypothetical. I guarantee yeah. you won't. Good. Good. I, you know, but does it matter? No, but I, th I feel like I would really regret not having had a chance to appreciate finally getting there and being realized and yeah. be able to – so all the how, stuff you talk about of it's going to not be boring and nah, no, no. all that stuff. So I, I want to experience that. I'm the lamppost. You cross over. Like, uh, geez, how close are you going to think you were? You're going to say, I was – I felt for a long time that it's one step away, except I have no idea how to take that step. 
So ah. it's going to stay there Could until I, offer I know. Could I a little I'm, of sage, wise advice? Yeah. Let it come to you. Yeah. Yeah, there's no steps. No, I agree. There are no steps anymore. Yep. Not at all. Let it come to you. That's, that's the step. That's the last step. You know, after lifetimes of a lot of steps, the last step is stopping, taking a deep breath and let it come to you, yes. and then not doing that mental thing, when's it going to come? I don't feel it. Shut up. A lot, just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I've said no. time and time again, these are the best times of any lifetime. No. You still don't get it, but uh, you're, actually you are getting it. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, that's, that's a good one. Just like, oh, damn, I wanted to do it. I'll give you a little hint uh, on this. I talked to a group in Norway, the, the troll place, <laughs> and I told them on the first day, they're, to me, you're dead. I said, you are just dead. You are the walking, living dead. And it kind of shook up the room a little bit, and, you know, after they stopped crying, <laughs> uh, just kidding, Norway. My point was, you actually already have. Death doesn't mean you have to leave the physical body, you see. Death is a transition, which I'm going to talk about in our upcoming new and improved, updated, slick version. Uh, death isn't physical, and that's one of the things to really get out of the mindset, out of the belief system. Death is just a transition into another, uh, another way of living, perceiving. Mm -hmm. So basically you're already dead. You're walking dead, and that's a good thing, because you're not locked in anymore. Yeah. You're kind of like a, uh, like a, and not zombie, but, uh, bec but you've let all the stuff go. When you let the, the ancestors go, when you let the, all the body things go, and your karma, and all the rest of that, you're as good as dead, and that's a good thing. You can quote me on that. And put that on your next birthday cake, Chambra. I am so <laughs> dead. <laughs> Once you can laugh at death, ha 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 ha! Laugh at death. Uh, once you can laugh at death, you've you've overcome, really, one of the very last obstacles of enlightenment, because people are still afraid of death, and there's no need to be. It's kind of fun, actually. Yeah. Not much reaction there. It's like, okay, not going to try that today. But remember what I said: death isn't the physical. Well, actually it is. You're going through the physical death right now, but it doesn't mean permanently leaving that body. It just means all the old is dissolving away to make room for the I Am. And the I Am's really big. The I Am's an ass-kicker, and so just come into your being, and you need to make room for it. You need to die. Um, I am warming up for Dreamwalker death. Death, let's get it out of our minds right now. Death does not mean leaving this physical body forever. It doesn't. That's a very, very old concept. It's at least about, what, four or five million years old. That's really a long time. Death is simply uh, moving to another realm. It's an evolution. It's leaving things behind that no longer serve you. And you certainly don't want to be buried in the ground, because that keeps you held to a lot of the old things. You just let it go. And it doesn't mean the death of your physical nature, your mind, or anything else, but it does mean an evolution. Next. Yes, what would you regret, Ero? Nothing. Nothing? If I, would regret, if I would want to do something else, I would do something else. Okay. You're, you're very much what I would call free. Uh, are you working right now? No. No. Uh, where do you live? Uh, a little bit everywhere, yeah, I mainly see. Finland. Uh, do you have a lot of concerns about having things come to you? No. No. So, and, and do people ridicule you for it? Uh, no. Family, uh, old friends, or anybody else to kind of like talk about you a little bit behind your back? No. No? Uh, good. So you are, you are truly allowing yourself to be free. We had one issue we've talked about, uh, the mind, you know, about battling that. Have you kind of come to terms yeah, with the mind? It's kind of melting slowly. Slowly, yeah. I can use it. It, it doesn't use me anymore. So ah, there you go. And uh, it's allowing it to melt slowly, I like that. It means you're not going to like, try to break it apart. Just letting it kind of, you know, the more you allow, the more it, it, it allows. And then you're not in this constant struggle with the mind, and, and you're really free. Yeah. Good. No regrets. Okay. Couple more, and I will get to okay. my point. Let's I think. See.
<laughs> oh, they always that pained look. They, they uh, crash. You need to be on hand right about the time Linda hands the microphone. Get that shot just as it's coming to that person, and they're like, "I hate you, Linda." Uh, it's an archive. Yeah, you have the archive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. What would you regret? You mean besides learning how to be a really good millionaire? Sure. I would regret uh, not hanging out with my kids as they're growing up. Okay. Uh, you, you haven't hung out with them much? Yeah, for 21 and 23 years. I've hung out with them quite a bit. Oh, so. But as they grow up more than that. Right. Okay. Um, short piece of advice here let it go. And that's a tough one. People like start throwing apples and rotten eggs at me. Oh, you're so against families. No, I'm not. But to give them their freedom, you kind of have to let them go. You know, there's still a very strong connection, a good mother connection, but at a certain point, let them go and become friends with them rather than a parent to them. There's such a huge difference. Uh, they're going to be uh, like a friend and admire, but no longer the parent child relationship, which is that's got to change. Uh, on this planet, the, the old paradigm of parent and child. Uh, um, I'm sorry for some of you who have your kids here, but uh, let them go. Jeez. Uh, yeah, well, no, let them go in, in the terms that there's a very, very old dynamic between parent and child, and it serves the child up until they're about the time they're two years old, and then after that, it needs to change. They're not yours. They have the unfortunate situation of having your DNA. And I'm so sorry for all the children, <laughs> because they got to get it from somewhere. And then they're going to spend the rest of their life going to counseling and uh, Crimson Circle to let go of that DNA. But it's really time to change that. Become friends with them, because you have been in the past. They've been your parent. Uh, now you're theirs. You've uh, you know, done all sorts of stuff uh, with them in, in, in the past. But now just be friends. Okay. Good. Two more. Yes. I have no. Regret. Would you mind standing up? Yes. Good. Um, I'm taller than you are. <laughs> <laughs> that was a distraction. She was going to go straight to the mind. I've told you before. If uh, for really good teachers, be able to sense it right away, and distract. Now what? I have no regrets. The only regrets I would have is that I I have not enjoyed my life before. Yes. So as I'm now. Yeah. I'm now, uh, now uh, much more enjoying life. Much more enjoying. Okay. Yes, after quantum allowing. Okay, good. Yes, no regrets. thank you, really, Adam. No regrets. And yeah. I, 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 when I'm here coming yeah. from uh, Slovenia to Colorado, yeah. I uh, need a hug. Yes, do you like Colorado? Yeah. Hug. Yeah. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being bold enough to walk up on stage. I, I was wondering, is she going to like allow that invisible barrier to keep her? And it's like, is she going to like? There's some kind of uh, unwritten law. Don't come up here when Adamus is channeling. I'm glad she broke it. One more. You'll never regret that. Oh, I, I wish I had stepped up there. I was so comfortable. She's not going to call me today again. Yeah, yeah. You're sending out an energy. You're all energy transmitters. Some uh, are much stronger transmitters, but you send out that energy. Ah, she's not going to pick me. She didn't hear the not part. She just pick me, pick me. <laughs> so, uh, what would you regret if you just came over to my side today? I'm not having awakened earlier. Yeah. Well. You know, actually, the timing. Or was not perfect. enjoying not now in. that I know so much, and yeah, I still yeah. keep like in the other side, as, right. if, as if I didn't know. Right. Yeah, I would regret that. We got, okay, not awakening earlier, but we realize the timing was actually kind of perfect. There's a thing in each and every one of you, uh, and online too, in all of you, you could have allowed your enlightenment, your realization, lifetimes ago. At most of you, about two. Some of you maybe even three, some of you one. But you could have allowed it, and you didn't. And there's that kind of like, oh, what's wrong with me? And geez, I, I was so close back then, and then I screwed up. I, I, I just I ate some meat, on, and it was a Friday, and the Pope was really pissed. And then there was this naked guy talking to the Pope. I don't, what's that all about? <laughs> one more for just entertainment. Hang on, you? let me finish my, my little oh, thing. Oh, here. you're not done. Sorry. So, where was I? Oh. Um, so, many of you 
could have just allowed the realization. We really had kind of a prime setup after the mystery schools. A prime setup that you were just you could have gone into that next lifetime and just allowed it. You didn't. You didn't. And it's not because you screwed up. It's not because you're a slow learner. There's only 33 uh, so far that have come through since. Well, I guess you're a little slow side, but uh, <laughs> no, you wanted to be here at this time. And uh, I'm trying to get Caldera to write a book. I'm surprised it's not done yet. I've dropped enough hints. But uh, it's about being here right now. When the planet is looking for consciousness, when the whole dynamic of New Earth and Old Earth, which I know some of you didn't like that pronost kind of news. Pronost is getting to be a dirty word with some of you. Oh, don't pronost me. Yeah. Uh, get your pronost out of here. Uh, you're just such a pronost. I can't believe it. Uh, try that on your spouse or your partner next time you're having an argument. Uh, go to pronost. Uh, but, uh, so where was I? Yeah, I get myself distracted. That's bad when the distractor gets distracted. Then we're really all gone. You need to be a little more on. A little bit more focused. Okay. So the focus is you chose to be here because it's the most transformational time in human history. The whole, uh, whole issue of old Earth and new Earth uh, is coming to a forefront. Uh, the, all the dynamics of this planet are so major right now. You wanted to be here. And I said to you, you don't have to be. Do it when it's a little bit easier. You know, back in the horse and buggy times, uh, go, go sit in a convent somewhere and, uh, or whatever. Go to, go to Egypt, uh, you know, 300 years ago and, and do it there. But you're like, no, I'm going to do it at this time. Imagine being embodied and hanging around and at the most in critical junction of human history ever, and not just human history. It has a profound – what is happening on the planet right now has a profound implication on all the spiritual families on the order of the ark. You could almost say that at the order of the ark, you know, it's all the archangels. It's that portal that you came through to get here to Earth. They're kind of on, uh, and don't take this wrong, but they're kind of on a violet alert. Uh, I didn't say red alert, violet alert. They're like, whoa, things are really amping up on this planet. And people in general are clueless about what's going on. I, I'm, gi I'm really diverting here, but I want to give you a, a, a huge distraction. Where is the attention going today? In the media, in the news, in people's minds, in the water cooler talk. Where is that attention? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. I don't care if you like him or don't like him. That's where the attention is going. It's not a sinister plot or anything else. This is humanity. This is, I would say, the, the lack of awareness of humanity. They want to go over here feeding and a bunch of growling dogs uh, on a bone over here, talking about Donald Trump. I'm over here saying, guys, don't you realize what's going on? Do you realize the, the convergence of technology and consciousness? Do you understand what's happening to the planet right now? Do you understand mental illness? That's, that is the greatest disease on this planet, and it is a disease. It's not a weakness. It's not anything. It's an absolute disease. And how people are dealing with it? With chemicals that really – the mind – badly, badly, badly. But we're going to talk about Donald Trump over here. It's, it's a social phenomena, uh, and people would rather talk about that and your celebrities and stars, who are generally pretty clueless. There are some who are actually kind of aware, but not many get through that door into Hollywood. It's a distraction. And you chose to come here to the planet at this time to bring in your consciousness, your I am, whatever you want to call it, is that I'm going to be the realized master on the planet. I'm not going to try to change all that over there. Um, uh, you, that's not your job. You're no longer energy holders, planet shifters, or anything like that. It's not your job to change this. But what you do is you bring in a light, a potential. Light has no bias whatsoever. Light is not feminine or masculine. It's not good or bad. It is the passion of the I Am. It attracts energies. It sets up and manifests reality. But the light itself, it is 
It has no bias, no judgment, no good, bad. It doesn't have happy days. The light has no happy days, no bad days. It is the radiant passion of the I Am. I exist. That's it. You came in here and said, I'm going to do this trick. I'm going to allow my realization, my enlightenment. I'm going to stay in the body. And you've committed, bef- when, before you came here, you committed that you were going to stay here at least seven years in the physical body, at least seven years after enlightenment. Maybe longer, maybe 50 years. I don't think you're going to want to be here in 50 years, but you're, you said at least seven years. You've got that programmed into you at some point. Now, some of them leave because the seduction is so strong to go to the other side, but I I want to address that to each and every one of you. Seven years to stay in the enlightened form on this planet may be longer. All you have to do is tap into that. All you have to do is tap in. So we've gone around the room. We're going to have one more entertaining uh, answer to the question about regrets. Where the hell did she go? Linda, the bathroom's over here. Let's go to the let's go to the Masters Club for this. Ah. <laughs> ah. Well, hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what are your regrets if you left today? I, I this is going to be boring for all of you guys. All right, stop the camera. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic uh, answer here. Yeah, I'm going to go with enjoying it because so many times, you know, you're in the groove. You're you're really living it, and then, you know, the mind slips in there and really. I bet I'm gonna I'm gonna up. pick on you uh, because uh, you're in another room, and I can't. Oh, <laughs> splendid! You've got a great sense of humor mm-hmm. when you're with other people. Mm-hmm. You're kind of a uh, little bit of a stick in the mud when you're by yourself or with your lovely partner. <laughs> Nailed you, eh? <laughs> Boy, am I glad he's in the other room. <laughs> oh, boy. And, and you, talk, you talk a story about enjoying things, but damn, you, 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 you're your own worst enemy, I guess, uh, is the human sure. way of saying it. Yeah. And you get yeah. into your head, uh-huh. you get into the mud. Uh, you know, sometimes instead of calling you mofo, I call you mudfo. You know, <laughs> mudfo. You get into your mud, you know, and yeah. then you've got to go out and be with people and. You let that enjoyable side come out, but your own, your own worst friend is yourself. Uh, did right. I get that clear? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Can we zoom in on yeah. him a little bit? I want to get a really close up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's the perfect setup for what I want to talk about. Uh, so you regret not really enjoying a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think you've you've been with me a few times. Yeah. Um, yeah. On solo stuff and. Yeah. Uh, um, Don't take we, that wrong, please. We have a pretty please. good time <laughs> once in a while. There. Yeah, yeah, you, and, and, and it's um, it's almost natural. You get into that kind of state of being, you know, by yourself, and the doubts and mm-hmm. all the ghosts come out, and uh, you know, nothing's really funny anymore. And right. you wonder how you're going to get through the the next day. And then, and then, those are what I would call psycho spiritual issues. Mm-hmm. But then you manifest them like almost intentionally, with other issues of, uh, for some of you it's biological things, some of you it's financial things, some of you it's, uh, you just become insensitive uh, to yourself, un- unmobilized in yourself. And those are, that's bad. I mean, that's, that's bad. And, and you're the perfect segue. Thank you, Mofo Marty. No extra Thank charge. You. That was the perfect segue. Uh, Linda picked the perfect one, as <laughs> always. Thank you. And we'll come back to me now. <laughs> I bring this up for a very, very important reason. You've heard of the, uh, the term, the human term called a glass ceiling? Glass ceiling. There is a wing ceiling. There's a wing ceiling. The glass ceiling, uh, as many, uh, for women, you know the glass ceiling is the inability to rise up in the, in the corporate uh, chain. By the way, you don't rise up by acting like a man, okay? You don't like bring out your warrior masculine Adam and try to act like one of the boys. Uh, they, you don't, because you're not going to get very far. It's not genuine, and they can see it and smell it, and they're going to take advantage of you. And the feminine is far more creative and effective than the masculine. 
You know, there no, it truly is. The the feminine has much more movement to it than the masculine, and it's kind of the way it was designed. Maybe it's time to get over that. But the 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 masculine is like a lumberjack. Uh, the feminine is like a, a sprinter, uh, and just uh, free sprinting across the meadows, while the masculine lumberjack is, you know, with the muscle and chopping down trees, but never really gets very far. There's this thing called the glass ceiling, and it's the inability to rise up and above. It's an illusion; doesn't really exist, uh, but people believe in it. And they believe that this glass ceiling is there if they come from a poor family. Uh, that they're never going to get in, be rich because of their background. Yes, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but actually it can make it much easier. There's people who put up the glass ceilings having to do with their, their intelligence. Intelligence is highly, highly overrated, and it's actually intelligence really isn't that smart. It's one thing to r- memorize facts and figures, but uh, it's a whole other thing to live in life, to have what I would call just common sense, or perhaps better said, any sense other than just focus. But there's a lot of glass ceilings there. There's one that you all hit from time to time. It's the wing ceiling, or maybe you think of it as a feather ceiling. You know, it's not solid, you know, it's not a, like a stone wall. It's just a bunch of angel wings. And the funny thing is, they're your own angel wings. And the regrets that I get all the time isn't about uh, some of the things you mentioned today. What I get all the time when they come to the other side and they say, ah, damn, it's regret that they let their doubts drown them. The regret that they just didn't do it. And it could be anything from something mundane in human life, but I'm applying it here to the allowingness. Uh, in your spiritual realization. You've had some amazing breakthroughs, a thrilling, absolute thrilling breakthroughs. And then there's that next day syndrome. Uh, I must be crazy. That must have just been because I ate a pizza and it gave me heartburn and that triggered some chemical in my brain and I had kind of a lucid experience on the toilet. And it's just <laughs> You know, but you justify it out of existence. <coughs> you know, at the very deepest levels within you, you absolutely know. I, I know you know. We talk about it. You can sense it. But then you let this feather ceiling, this wing ceiling, get in your way. Uh, the wings are up there. Uh, they're your own. They're inviting you to go beyond. They're inviting you to rise up with them. Remember what I said in our last shout? Let the wings of your dreams carry you into realization. The dreams that you've had from the Atlantean times until now, the dreams of embodied realization, let those wings carry you. But it's almost like you're afraid of them. Wow, there's those wings up there, and you know, I can't get past them. They're yours, and they want to take you beyond the doubt and the holding back. And the feeling that you're going to go crazy, you are not going to go crazy. I can tell you that right now. My only exception to that, and I'll probably get a a few nasty grams, my only exception to that, if you are on one of these SSRI medications, and I don't want to argue the fact and anything else, because the fact is they are driving people crazier. People do insane things because it puts a very wet blanket over a natural rhythm of the mind, and especially if one is coming into awakening or into awakening, it will do so much damage that will cause uh, lifetimes of corrective activities. There's a couple things we're doing up in the other realms right now. One is we're having to train angelic beings who have been on Earth before, not not the newcomers or never bends, but the ones who have been on Earth before, how to handle the beings who die, who have been on the SSRIs. They are numb. They are gray, little gray pellets when they show up. Uh, they, they, are, they are so without awareness. And to try to work with them uh, when there's no vitality, there's no passion, 
try to work with them. It's harder than working with a suicide case when they come to the other side. If they've been on these medications for any length of time, Calder's asking me, fact-checking me, but it's any time longer than two years, and they're still on them when they die. They also want to die. They want to go out of existence. They cannot stand it anymore. They know there's something in there, but it's been grayed out. It's been blanked out of them. They just want to go out of existence. So can you imagine trying to work with them? Uh, the other group that we're training right now is, because uh, we know it's coming, we've seen some of it, the ones who get lost in virtual reality. I talked about it in the Pronost update. Virtual reality is becoming so real, so seductive and compelling, that there are those who are going to get lost in, in the, the goggles and the masks, or even just the constant day in, day out uh, of these video games and the other things that are coming next, that they, uh, that they die within the virtual reality. The funny th uh, not, there's nothing funny about it. The odd thing about it, sometimes their bodies haven't died. And they're back there. They've got a robot body. I mean, it's on autopilot. Their biology is on autopilot, but there's nothing left here. They've died within virtual reality. We've got to, we've got to help them get back to the I am here, uh, to the I exist. And, and these are challenges that, uh, that we're facing with the very changing world that you have. I don't want to digress on that. I talk about it in Pronost, and we will be talking about it. But I want to get back to that wing ceiling. Those wings are yours. They're there to carry you into enlightenment. But you have to take a deep breath. Go beyond your doubt. Well, you know, are the wings strong enough to carry me? Shut up. Where are they going to carry me to? Shut up double. Uh, how do I know those are really mine? You're going to drive me crazy with all these questions. <laughs> and it's about going beyond doubt. Uh, there is a feeling that you're going crazy, because other people don't see, feel, sense what you sense. I was going to ask another question, but we're running out of time, and I do – well, hell no, we're not running out of time. Uh, eh, but I'll save it. The, you've had these feelings when you were very young, and then they got covered up, uh, knowing this, that you're special, but you won't let yourself feel that. I'm not talking about special better than others, but you are special. When you've covered that up, you doubt it, and then you, you've allowed yourself to plod along uh, in your own spiritual quest because of the doubts. And what I get on the other side when they cross over is, and when I say, so what do you regret? It's like that I just didn't do it, that I held back, that I doubted, that I was worried about going crazy, that I was worried about what others would think about me. If you're worried about what others are going to think about you, I'll tell you this right now, they're looking for a hero on this planet. They are looking for a hero. Who do they put their energy into? Superficial. Uh, models and stars and sports figures, probably all nice people, but they're looking for something deeper. They don't feel comfortable anymore, uh, nor do you, about putting your, your standard uh, as, as a politician. I don't think too many of you get up in the morning and aspire to be Donald Trump, except for maybe the hair. Um, <laughs> this planet doesn't have heroes anymore, and, and then they create them, cartoon book heroes. They're digging them up from the 20s and the 30s, uh, and, and superficial heroes. Uh, but it, it's not satisfying. It's like when you're really hungry and you sit down to eat a bowl of jello, it just doesn't quite do it. Yeah, you're eating, your mouth is going, you got a few of the taste buds stimulated, but it's just not there. Uh, they're looking for somebody who had I don't, I don't like the word courage, Calder. Uh, they're looking for somebody who has the freedom to, to just be, to go beyond the doubts. You already know. It's nothing I'm going to tell you. You already know about your enlightenment, your realization. You already know that it's not being superhuman, uh, anything like that. And it's a true transformation. It is a death in a way, but a death that will finally give you freedom in life. 
you have those feelings. You run it through your mind, and then it gets polluted and distorted, and then you, you fear the, the, the wing ceiling, like the glass ceiling. You fear it, and you curse it. Ah, oh, yeah, there's all these barriers in my way, and there's the, uh, what, what was the, you have all sorts of names for it, but uh, the, the veil between the realms. There's no veil between the realms. I have looked for it. I've gone all over. You guys see a veil? A veil? I see it on some Muslim women, but I don't see it all over the planet keeping them from ascension. And you blame it on all oh, the veil. There's none, but there are your wings the wings that want to carry you into your realization. They're yours. The only thing between you and the wings is your doubts. That's it. That is it. That is it. We're going to name our next series, starting in August, the Wing Series. We are going to go beyond the doubts if it hurts. We are going to, we are going to allow those wings to carry you gracefully and beautifully into your realization. Those wings are yours. You've been avoiding them, resisting them, making excuses, saying, ah, i got to wait until uh, my children are grown. Do it now. No matter if they're 21 and uh, 23 years old or if they're five years old, do it now. They deserve it, and better yet, you deserve it. There's no effort in this. It's all about allowing. But allowing is difficult when, when you're so held back with doubts, should I or shouldn't I, and oh, am I just going crazy? What is crazy? Crazy is this. Crazy is staying in the patterns, staying little and limited, and you know that. Sometimes I, I want to take some of you and just like dunk you in uh, cold water and hold you down there for about ten minutes. <laughs> no, really, I do. Uh, ten minutes, yeah. And because, because you get so comfortable in being miserable, and then you cry to me about it. Uh, you come and say, oh, yeah, what's happening? Where's enlightenment? It's like, it's right here. Ah, they're wings. They're right here. Oh, but I'm not sure. You doubt and you worry and you fear. We're going to put them on. We're going we're gonna to get them on in our next series, the Wings series, and feel what it's like to be really free. I started this talk today talking about freedom. And this country and others were set up for the freedom of humans. But now in transhumanism, we're going into the freedom of the I Am freedom of not just your human self, but your spirit. This whole series was called the Transhumanism, and it was my joke. It was a play on words, because there's a whole movement on the planet right now to – not that it's good or bad, but it's to replace the human biology, with, uh, which is very, very old, uh, very, very old, but it's to do a fast upgrade using nanotechnology and other technologies that uh, haven't even come off the bench yet basically to change the birth process uh, so that it will be relatively uncommon uh, 30 or 40 years from now for a woman to be carrying a child in her belly. Very uncommon. It will happen once in a while. Everybody will go, oh, what the hell happened to you? <laughs> At least I had sex. You didn't. Uh, <laughs> it will be in so many other ways. Artificial wombs, uh, different types of incubators, uh, um, there's one that I, I laughed about. It's called Johnny on the Spot. It's a name I gave it. It's like you print a body and then you try to infuse it with consciousness via technology, via like putting a lot of data in there. Oh, that's not a human being. Uh, it's maybe a, a servant, a robot, but it's not a human. It's time for the wings. It's time to stop dallying around with it. Transhumanism, in the conventional terms, is moving very fast. The technologies for the body and the mind, whether it's mechanical, electrical, chemical, or uh, just energetic, they're moving very, very fast. They're spending trillions of dollars every year on the development of technology, which is fine. Technology for the Master, technology is fine, because the Master allows energies, allows everything to serve them. 
But when one is developing this at lightning speed and they're not a master, and there is no understanding of consciousness, something is going to um, go out of balance. We're over here with transhumanism, our version of it, allowing ourselves to release old DNA. That's really not, not you. And allowing the light of the I Am, of you, not of God, not of uh, Jesus, not of me, but your light to come in. That's going to change the body. You're going to die, meaning you're going to transform in the body, in vitro, death. You're going to stay right there and transform. You'll continue on, but you're going to feel so different. You're going to think very different. It's not a race, not at all, but I do need to explain that this whole transhumanism movement uh, is developing very, very fast. Nothing wrong with it. Again, a master can have anything serve them. But it's moving very fast, and because this planet is still power-oriented, highly power-oriented, there is this strong likelihood for things to go amiss. Uh, I'm not predicting uh, collapse or anything like that, but I'm saying that's pretty shaky ground uh, when you've got technology developing so quickly without consciousness. By the way, when I refer to consciousness, I'm not talking about morals or values, because those are still man-made. I'm talking about consciousness, awareness, light. And that's what it's lacking over here right now. Maybe that'll change. We're over here in our transhumanism, in the ability to heal the body using the aniatron, but just allowing it. We're over here going beyond the mind. And I know you think you're going crazy. You are. Crazy means beyond the mind. But there's, you're not going crazy in the old sense of the word where they're going to lock you up. You will not go crazy. You'll go into your senses, into sensuality. We're going here where there is no longer the old uh, birth-death process where you can do the Sam thing, where uh, like Tobias did, come into a physical body after it's been born, whether it is biologically produced between a man and a woman or in the laboratory. Adama, or Tobias came in with this little trick of, uh, of doing the um, shell body, knowing that humanity was going the way of non-conventional uh, biological bodies. He said, can it be done in a biological body, because then it can probably be done in a nanobiology body. So he was really setting up uh, kind of a, almost a test, almost an experiment to say, can it be done? Can we bypass the birth? Because they're going to do it over here with technology. Can we do it here with our light? We're going to go very, very fast next year. There is, you're going to uh, stumble and trip at times. Now you're going to get concerned about if you're doing the right thing, if you're um, doing the right moves or whatever. I want to constantly remind you not to let doubt get in your way. It's a little scary because d you've used doubt to kind of temper yourself. Well, if I doubt myself, then I just won't you know, go crazy bizarre. So you've used it to hold yourself in, but we've got to get over that. It's driving you crazy, and, and we're only at 33. Hey, come on, by the end of next year, we've got to we got to do a little better than that. 33 realized embodied masters. Let's take a deep breath with that. And sorry, now we'll get started. I'm done with. Uh, I want to talk about one thing, and I'll need the microphone for this. Just a couple answers. Where did this whole concept of oneness come from? Where did you know? I, I hear people. We could turn up the lights. Linda's going to do the microphone. Where did this concept of oneness, we are one, we're going to go back to one, where did they come from? I, I'm, I'm doing this as part of my research project for the Ascended Masters. We don't understand. Where did oneness come from? Good question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and when it comes time like this, you don't know, you take a deep breath and watch Dave shoot your picture, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you uh, say you make something up. I can say only where does it come from me? Come for you. Uh, for me, it comes from 
Have you heard that expression before? Have you ever been to a oneness conference? <laughs> no. Yeah, um, don't go. I just felt uh, uh, worthless, so I wanted to make something. Okay, you felt worthless, so let's I'll come back and into oneness. You know. Okay. But I'm over that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> you are actually. That's the beauty of it. You are. You still doubt that you are, but I know you are. Uh, next, let's go fast here. We have we, we have work to do. I'm going um, fast. I run like a monkey. <laughs> smell like one. Uh, it's a, no, I said I smell like a monkey. Uh, oh, <laughs> I missed something there. Calder uh, wanted to punch me on that one. Maybe it's because humans felt inadequate. Yeah. yeah. Small. Good. And we're looking for something larger to go toward. Yeah. More significant than. Did that. you ever buy into the oneness thing? No, not really. No. Okay. A couple more. Where did oneness come from? Okay. Drag this back to Gary. I knew she was going to pick on you. Actually, I told her to. The one time I didn't want her to. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Let's well That's stand up if you wouldn't mind, just so everybody in the world can see you. Uh, where did that whole oneness thing come from? A sense of inadequacy and needed to be connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, did you ever kind of buy into it at one at one point a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Did you go to oneness conferences? Uh, not by that name. Yeah. What what were they called? Uh, you know, spiritual this, guru that. Right, right, right. Church this. Did you notice any oneness there? Uh, only within myself. Yeah. Good. Good. Excellent. A couple more. Two more. Okay. Where did oneness come from? Oh, I, they, the okay. ascended masters are wondering about that, and I told them I, even though I know everything, I was going to have to get it checked out. I want to hear what the humans are going to say. I think it came from wanting to have a peace with everybody. To yeah. um, you know, everything is is. I, I hate to I use the word good. I'm not going to. Let's just oh. hug. <laughs> we are one. <laughs> my sister. We are one. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That was my macchio act. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. But it felt good, kind of, for yeah. a moment there. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Good. That was good. Okay. Uh, one more. Where did oneness come from? Come on, who invented it? Who created it? Who sat down one day and said, oh, right, we've got to have oneness? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. <laughs> 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 yes, go ahead and stand up. Oneness. The one sovereign being that we all were at one time. Yeah. And uh, creationism. Yeah. The explosion. Big Bang, yeah, and actually, became none of, separate. None of that really happened. It's a, a way of telling the story, but actually never happened. Uh, it is an old history. It is an old history. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we all came from one. Yeah. Even Tobias touted that in Journey of the Angels because there was no better way to explain. Actually, it scared the crap out of you if, if he'd have told you how it really happened. So, he told a nice story about we we're back in the oneness, and he still believes it actually. But <laughs> he'll wake up. Thank you. Oneness. Where was it created? What year? What time? By whom? Oh, in about the 1700s, about my time, even though I didn't create it. Um, it was for the convenience of the church. That's it. Pure and simple. Oneness is not that old. Uh, some people say you could go back into some of the uh, old Buddhist or Hindu teachings and find it, but not so much. Not, I mean, come on. The, the Hindus, uh, if they talk about oneness, which once in a while they do, and they like to think that it was talked about you know, 5,000 years ago, this is a group of wonderful people who have 100,000 gods. That's not oneness. <laughs> so when they talk about it, I'm like, really? Where's the oneness in 100,000? Um, sorry for all of you Hindu. Oh, there are no Hindus watching today. Okay. Uh, there's two of you. I see you. Yeah. I, hello. Good to see you. Um, <laughs> is that politically incorrect? Spiritually yes, incorrect? Yes, that was politically incorrect. No. Well, okay. Then the whole thing today is politically incorrect because I'm talking and acting like an American. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Whoa. I don't know. The ones that aren't from here are laughing their ass off right now. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Uh, your uncle Adamus. I just couldn't resist this. Yeah, I'm being an American today. So oneness was created by the church for the benefit. What the hell is this? Is that a dress of some kind? A skirt? A, okay. 
I don't know. I haven't been on Earth in a long time. Would you help me with this, Linda? If I'm supposed to tie it or something? You're doing good. You're doing okay. good. Okay. So oneness. The art of distraction. Let's take a good deep breath. Oneness was kind of created by the church. Kind of. Uh, we are all one. We're going to go back to the one. Stay in line. Hypnosis. We are one. We are one. We are one. We're going back to one. It sounded really good. And you know who really picked it up was the, the New Thought people in the late 1800s and really picked up some momentum uh, in the early 1960s. We're all one. Because I'm not. We're all one because I'm not. I'm not worthy to be sovereign. Uh, I'm not worthy to be sovereign. I'm not worthy of my own divinity. I've got to go back in oneness. Now, how boring is that? That's a shit bad joke if God was really that way. I'm sorry, Edith. Edith looked at me like, when are you going to stop swearing? Or was that admiration? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's this how that would be a really bad joke if you die and then ooh, you see the white light, ooh, it carries you off into oneness. And you'd be like, all that work. I exist. I am that I am. No. I'm just part of this big milk bowl with everybody else. All that work went for naught. All that trying to find my identity. I'd rather go back, back to the uh, world of being human and lost in this oneness. This is so boring. I mean, there's no identity in this great big oneness. I didn't even like that person over there that's in the oneness, and now they're here too. Everybody gets in. Oh, <laughs> God. If only I could get out of the oneness. I'd go back to Earth and I'd talk to everybody. I'd scream, Don't go! The oneness sucks. There's no sensuality in it. It's just boring as crap. It's like being in milk all the time. Warm milk. Skim milk. It's never any different. It's always the same. Oh my God, I had it so good on Earth. Why didn't I just appreciate it? I mean, why didn't I appreciate my sovereignty, my unique being? And then you probably say to yourself, you know, I get it now. I get it. Actually, the church kind of was getting there, but they took it down the wrong path, the path of their power. What was really meant by this statement is I come into my own oneness. I got all these aspects flying around out there, all these past lives who are, by the way, counting on you right now to do it in this lifetime, so they're not floating around. I got all these parts and pieces. They're disconnected, and they will always be facets. But it was about bringing those into my oneness, the I am that I am. M many, many facets of, of the crystal that I am, but a oneness with myself. Oh my gosh, they missed the point. I had to go back to Earth and teach, I am the oneness. I am the one. A and bring all of myself back together, divine and human and master and student and all my past lifetimes and all of the potentials, they're mine. They're mine. It's me. Without any further words, let's just mirab this. <laughs> mirab is a verb. It means to shift consciousness. Like my skirt? A lot. So <laughs> it's really my point of the day. Everything else was just fun. The oneness is you. It always was. It's the sovereign being that you are. You are not beholden to any being, any being whatsoever. There is no dark entity who could ever, ever, ever take away your consciousness, your I am. Some of you hold back from this, um, this wink ceiling. You hold back because you're afraid that if you go out there, that you're going to be vulnerable to forces that are stronger than you. It's more easy down here. There's some demons out there, uh, some bad stuff out there. When you get over this whole thing that power is real, 
because they use power. The, the dark side uses power to deceive. And there is no power. And you just take a deep breath and go, ah, oh, there is no power. And that's when you start really allowing the wings of your dreams to bring you into realization. But we're here right now for oneness. Just feel that for a moment, the I am, I exist oneness. Just take a good deep breath, your oneness, totally sovereign. Totally sovereign. Another way to look at it is you're self contained. There's nothing, including energy, that you need outside of oneness, your oneness. Every aspect, every facet of yourself, every past life, every personality trait in this lifetime is part of that oneness. They've been begging to come home. They've been begging you to come back into the sovereign oneness that you are. I bring up oneness at the end of our Transhuman series because it's really about really letting every part and piece, every aspect and every facet know that it's time now. No more dallying around. No more hanging out in the periphery of the I am. No more taunting you, mocking you, as some of the aspects do. You've got so many parts of yourself, of the oneness, that simply want to come back. They want to go on this ride with you. They can't do it if they're all dissociated, disconnected. So we sit here in a gathering like this at the end of transhuman before we really start soaring in our next series and simply feel into the oneness. That's all you have to do is just feel into the I am oneness of yourself. And when you do, it takes all those parts and pieces, even if you think they're broken, wounded, hurt, traumatized, it brings back masculine and the feminine. It brings back the good and the bad, the light and the dark. And it puts you kind of in, I see it as such a kind of a huge orb, multi-faceted orb. It brings everything back to that orb, a glowing, shimmering shape that you are. With millions and millions of facets, different edges to it. When you back way far away to observe, it's like it's just one huge shimmering ball of light. When you get up really close, it's millions of perfect facets. Millions and millions of edges, you could say, facets on this orb, everyone perfect. You know, there are some of these facets, there's almost like fragments of kind of like crystals, glass that were floating around outside of this orb, tentative, not sure they wanted to come into it, come back home like space debris, like stuff, uh, the rings of Saturn, stuff just in orbit around it. But when we take a deep breath here and allow, 
about. I'll stop talking and just let you have that experience when you take a deep breath. Let yourself feel what happens with all that debris that was floating around outside of the orb. Take a good deep breath. pieces together. The human self is not responsible for enlightenment. It's just about allowing. But when you sense into this beautiful orb, the oneness of you, your sovereignty, it's like calling all the parts and pieces back home. This is transhumanism, what I call transhumanism. This is the coming back to self. This is the metamorphosis from all the parts and pieces that were laying all over the cosmos, that were laying all over time and space, fragments of yourself. And the real transhumanism is allowing these all to come back together. Remember, you can't mentally put them back. You can simply allow. struggles with what you call aspects or parts of yourself. They're the reason for a lot of doubts. They're the reason for a lot of dreams being diminished, held back. Now we just take a deep breath into the oneness, the sovereignty of, of you. very early teachings of the Essenes, the Gnostics, they talked about oneness, not about oneness in all of the universe. They were talking about the oneness of the self and got, well, it got distorted, it got misunderstood. How easy it is to hypnotize people when you talk about oneness. 1984-ish kind of big brother but in these early teachings which we'll talk about in some of our shouts and definitely in Kihak I bring some of them back up these early teachings were about the true nature of sovereignty oneness of the being the integrated being oneness within yourself while it may seem so uh, logical, I guess, uh, so natural, there's a huge resistance to it. It means accepting and allowing yourself. You 
going beyond the doubts. Going crazy, I guess you would say. But what is crazy? Let's take a deep breath in our form of transhumanism. An evolution of body, mind, and spirit into a body of consciousness. An evolution going beyond ancestral biology. A natural evolution beyond the fears of the mind. Our form of transhumanism is not to work on these things, not to not to put the human in the way of a natural process of enlightenment, but for the human to be a participant and to allow with their divine, with their oneness. For the human to realize that they are not responsible for their realization. They are just being asked to allow and experience. Where there is no effort, where it is simply allowing, trusting. Our form of transhumanism is knowing that the body, the biology, can absolutely heal itself. Without any outside interference, other than maybe a walk in nature or sitting in a warm bathtub, our form of transhumanism is not to collect and store all the data that we possibly can, like the human computers do, but to realize we need to store nothing, nothing. have to store data, facts and figures, because there is this thing called the knowingness. It is like your personal oneness cloud. It is your own knowingness, and it does not store data like the mind does. It does not remember like the mind does, but the knowingness just knows. And it does not know until it needs to know. That is the beauty of it. It is not a storage place. Your knowingness, your nost. The best way to put it is knowingness operates outside of time and space, therefore, it doesn't have to be linear, it doesn't record dates. If there's something you need to know that occurred in the past, it goes to the past. It doesn't store it, it's just there. It's an I am here, it's a consciousness. The human mind no longer needs to store memories and information and have its secret vaults where it stores your identity imprint. We go beyond all of that. That's our transhumanism. We don't need big computers embedded in our being. We simply go to knowing this. It's always there. It needs no energy whatsoever, this thing called knowingness. It's always there. That's our transhumanism, our oneness. Where will humans go with technology? A lot of potential different directions. I'll keep you posted about it, but I'm not so not so drawn to spending a lot of time on that. I'd rather talk to you about your transhumanism. I ask while we're in this mirab, I ask you to feel one thing. I ask you to feel that seven years a commitment. Once there is the realization to stay embodied for at least seven years, there's a commitment to yourself. And it may be longer, it might be much longer. But to stay, not to fly out of the body, not to leave the planet, but to stay. I invite you to feel into that.
would say that there's a joy in that feeling, a true joy. Let's take a good deep breath together. In this weekend of independence here in the United States of America, a republic, not a democracy, here in the land of the free and the home of the brave, but I want you to take a look, really feel into this between now and our next gathering, the analogy between America and what you now call the the developed earth, but America, the desire for freedom, the desire for a better life, and what's happening right now with old earth and new earth. Mm. Not much different, my friends. Yes, just like the pioneers who came over here and set up this new place, they, they missed where they come from. They missed family and traditions, and they missed ways, whether they're from Europe or Asia or South America, they missed a lot of it. But they were pioneers. They came over for freedom. Now we have new earth and old earth. New earth where, and Theos, uh, where we're setting up really the next round of freedom. Doesn't mean that you can't still be here on this earth or come visit anytime you want. You probably, I know you'll never choose another regular incarnation, but just like the pioneers who came over to America, set up their colonies, which turned into towns, which turned into cities, once in a while they go back and visit. They go back and visit Ireland or England or France, and they realize could never go back. I had too much freedom, too much new. They could never go back. It was nice to visit, but they could never go back. Let's take a good deep breath on this beautiful day. A good deep breath into your oneness. that, my friends. I don't know if it was a day of lecture, um, as I said, serious lecture, or if it was a bit entertaining, but one thing I know is that I am in the land of the free and the home of the strange. <laughs> all is well in all of creation. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, it seems worthy to ask each of us to just take a moment more. This beautiful rob of our personal oneness, to just take a few breaths and really let that integrate. That oneness of ourselves, each of us. The incredible potential within each of us. Take the good deep breath, feeling that sovereign oneness. Take the good deep breath. Feel the energies move and allow the feelings to stay. Breathe and celebrate our oneness, each and every one of us, individual and one. Thank you for being here with Adamas Saint-Germain and wonderful Jeffrey for taking that on. Thank you. We'll be back here the first Saturday of August, same time, same place. Thank you for watching, listening, and for being in the studio. Now it's time to maybe celebrate that oneness just a little bit. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.
bailar, vamos a cantar, vamos a bailar, este ritmo que tocamos. Merci.